Oh yeah, because last week we were, you had to juggle a lot. You saw a lot of different stuff, a lot of different guys out there, including Darren making his first NFL start. What was that process like? Oh, it's like anytime you got to make all those daggone changes, whether it be injury or COVID or whatever, it was, uh, you know, we, we, we struggled at some spots. You know, we tried to, uh, for the first time all year, match up uh, AJ on digs and, uh, as I've told you in the past, that's not always the easiest thing to do, uh, you know, and it, we struggled with it sometimes. We had some guys get lined up late. Uh, we had an uncommonly number of missed tackles, which killed us in a run game. Um, we had 15 of them, and we haven't had 15 in three games usually. Uh, we had 11 missed assignments, and just all that a little bit because we were trying to change some things around to try to get the best matchups we could. But when you try to do that, it's, it's not the norm. It's not what you've practiced all year. You try to do it thinking it's going to give you the best chance. And I don't think it necessarily did. You know, they didn't hurt us in the passing game. Uh, we, had, we got picks. We got some things. We did some good things there. It really hurt us in the run game. We ended up with some bad run force situations on the edge and uh, that Contributed sometimes to the guys being out of position, which gave them bad angles, which made them miss tackles. It's just it wasn't, um, you know, I've said it in the past, I, I don't like to do it, and I wish I hadn't done it even in that one. So. Well, we did well in the past game. The, the, the matching up AJ on Diggs wasn't a problem because I don't, I don't even know how many catches he had, but I never felt like that was ever a, a problem. I mean, he caught a couple, but. But the problem of it is when you do that, then somebody else has to figure out who they got. You know, you got two other DBs or corners in there, a nickel and a corner, and they're young. You know, we had Sheffield who's playing for the first time. Then you got Darren starting, you know, and and Sean is back there. and play, he's A lot of new guys. And even though we thought it was maybe the best way to do it, in retrospect, I don't know if it was. Because what happened was we just, it wasn't the passing game. It was a running game that ended up hurting us because we had some guys get lined up late. And meanwhile, the ball's being snapped and run around the edge, and we don't have anybody there to, to help the defensive end. You know, whenever you try to help somebody, you're hurting somebody. You're putting another load on somebody else. And uh, they got a good running scheme, got a really good running scheme, a really good running game. And a quarterback really hurt us. And that was something that we, that was the biggest emphasis going into the game was, take care of the quarterback, and we didn't do it. We did it in the passing game. We didn't do it in the running game. Had a chance to sack him on a third and eight, you know, to get off the field on the first score. Uh, we should be off at least, you know, hold him to a field goal. We, we didn't. We missed a tackle. It was just, uh, you know, just disappointed in the running game. Disappointed in myself just thinking it through, just saying I know better. And I tried to do it, and it, it, didn't, it didn't work very well. How do you think Darren handled his first start on Sunday? Okay. I mean, he just, uh, he's a rookie. I mean, you know, it's, and he's playing a really good football team. Well, we weren't playing some slouch, you know, not that there is a slouch, but I'm just saying that, you know, he, he, did, he did okay. He did okay. And for him and, and all the rookies in the defense, how do you think they've handled their first season adjusting to what you've asked them to do for him? Well, I'm, pl I'm pleased with them. Uh, actually, they, they've made some mistakes, like like every player has, and they're typical rookie mistakes. But here's the thing about it is that, you know, from the get-go, from the very first time I talked to you guys, you know, this is not an easy system that they're learning. But we have made a lot of growth. So I'm expecting going into next year that that growth will really pay off for us. And so, you know, you, you take your lumps sometimes, learning the system, but then now you don't have to, you know, like Richie, Darren, all those guys don't have to relearn the system. They've been through it. And so hopefully, you know, starting out next year, it's not going to be like, you know, brand new to them. There's going to be a lot of carryover. And then we get, hopefully with COVID ever gets gone, we'll have a spring and all that kind of stuff and meet with them and do all that kind of stuff that it'll pay, it'll pay off in the long run. It'll pay off. I'm, I'm pleased overall with all of them. Talk about that growth, and this will probably be the last chance that we get to talk to you as the season winds down. I mean, how – I know you talk about them understanding the scheme, but in what ways have you seen this defense evolve from what you maybe thought 
this defense would be in training camp early in the season and now what it is today? Oh, I've seen big strides. Um, you know, we've kind of, we're on a 12 game streak of uh, having a turnover in every game in the last 12 games. Um, you know, the, the thing that we just got to get better, I, I've seen tremendous strides from, from early in the season where it seemed like pretty much whatever you called, there was one guy making a mistake somewhere. Whereas now there's a lot of calls and nobody's making a mistake. You know, we're, we're making some plays. The thing that we just really got to develop in the off season and before next year is the ability to rush the passer and not always have to pressure to do it. And number two is to be able to play man coverage better in the back end. And because it's kind of a twofold thing. If, if you don't get to the quarterback, that means the secondary's hung out there forever. And um, that's not good. On the other hand, if you can't play man coverage at some point in time in this league, I mean, you're just going to have to. So it, it's those two things to me that we really have to develop before next year. It's not now learning the system. It's now being able to actually have the ability to play man coverage and to actually be able to rush the passer without it being a pressure. Those are the two things that just have got to get better next season. Do you develop those things with experience or do you have to do it through personnel? Both. Yeah. All things. You know, I, I just... I can, I can go back to so many players. I can watch so many players on film uh, now watching. I watch guys rush the passer, and I'll guarantee you the coach didn't coach them. The, the, the guy's got talent. Right. I, we, I mean, we did a lot of things. Suggs, you'd go, oh, no, sack. You know, it's like, you know, he, he took the – didn't go to the side that he was supposed to or whatever, and then he sacks the quarterback. It wasn't exactly coaching. You know, didn't make Ray Lewis, didn't make Terrell Suggs. Those guys made themselves. We just, I didn't screw them up. Um, but it's just, it's both. They just, uh, we got to, we got to develop the talent that we have, whether it changes, you know, every team changes in the off season. It's like I told the players the other day or in our meeting actually today, you know, this won't be the same team next year that's sitting out here right now. It never is. I don't care whether you win the Super Bowl, you have a good season, bad season, average season, it doesn't really matter. No, no team, I think the Bucks are about the only one I've ever heard of, Tampa Bay, that actually got everybody back. The year we won the Super Bowl in 2012, we lost, we lost seven players off that defense. Starters. I mean, they all got contracts, <laughs> and, and two of them retired. So it's, you know, it's just, it's going to be with probably t different talent, and it's also going to be us doing a better job of coaching and getting them to, to do the things we need to do. Both. I was watching uh, Grady Jarrett's mic'd up from a few weeks ago, and there was one moment where there were three guys on him, and he said, damn, you can't block anybody else, or you don't want to block anybody else? <laughs> that, that actually, there really was a play a couple of weeks ago in Detroit. I think it was Detroit, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. It's like, I watched the thing on film. I said, they go, somebody ought to be free. I mean, there's three guys on him. Uh, we actually did make a decent play on it, though. <laughs> so, hey, if they block three of them and leave somebody go, that's fine by me. Yeah. But, I mean, as a coordinator, when you have a guy like Grady Jarrett who is getting double teamed at the rate of which he's being double teamed, I mean, is there anything that you can do to free him up? Or is just one of those things where it's like he, the respect that he has in the league, people know what he brings to the table? It's, it, we've tried. I mean, if you notice, there's been some times we've played him outside on some things and tried to rush him from outside and try to keep him away from the big guys inside. Uh, but it's kind of inherent to his position. That you play in there and you're good, they're going to double team you. And the thing that that you got to be able to do is have be able to put somebody usually next to them that they got to also worry about. It's it's like anything, you know. If 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 you play beside Aaron Donald, you got a good chance you're going to end up one on one. Uh, if you play beside Suggs, a good chance they're turning the protection that way. So if you're the other end, you know, then you got a pretty good chance getting one on one. I mean, the one year, I can't even remember what it was, 13 or 14, uh, we had Suggs on one side and Elvis, Elvis Doomerville on the other side. Well, Doomerville ended up with 17 sacks. And guess why? You know, now Suggs ended up with 13, so it wasn't too bad. But the point was is that y we just need more. We, we need to develop pass rushers and get – and that will help Jarrett if he – all the stress isn't necessarily put on him. And, and we, have, we have tried to do some things to free him up. 
a lot of our zone pressures are we put him in different spots so we can try to get him one on one and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't topic of the week is college football you probably haven't had time to no to see <laughs> is whether this generation of players quote unquote loves football i wonder you've been doing this for a while what's your take on the difference? i'd love to tell you but it wouldn't be fair it wouldn't it would not Josh, I'd love to tell you, but the truth of it is it wouldn't do me any good to, to say something because then players are going to take that as either one thing, either I'm, I like it or I don't, but in either case, I don't think either one of them is going to benefit me as a coach when the players hear this press conference. You know, there's just things when you guys ask things, just like asking about players, I'm always thinking about if I'm the player, how would I like to hear my, what would I like to hear my coach say? And if I'm a young generation player, the last thing I want to hear is some coach say that we're a bunch of softies or that we're this or we're that. I don't believe that. I, I think it's all individual. I, I think it's, hey, there's some guys that are and there's some guys that aren't. There's some guys that are motivated by just the game of football and there's some guys that are motivated by money and there's some guys that are motivated. I don't know what everybody's motivation is. There's coaches too. Now, I'll tell you about the coaches, because <laughs> I think the coaches, I don't think, I, I think the younger generation of coaches feel a little entitled. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're spoiled. I think they, hey, go work in a high school, go work in a Division three school where you got to mow the grass, or you got to line the field, you got to do all those things, and you'll appreciate what you have when you have it, instead of being 25 years old and wondering why I'm not a coordinator already in the NFL. Okay, I went to the NFL at 55 years old. I was a high school coach. I was a Division three coach. I was in the MAC as a coach. I didn't go to, to New England until I was 55 years old. And so I felt like I paid my dues. And, and I feel like it made me a better coach, made me a better teacher. I was a school teacher. I learned how to teach, not just stand up. I look at guys now, they can't stand up in front of the room and talk to people. Yeah. They can't. Got to get on the computer. Everything's computerized. All that stuff. It's still a people's game. Players want to talk to you. They want to hear from you. They, it's not that. I still do everything in writing. I don't do, I do all my own breakdowns. I don't ask some quality control guy to do it. Everybody gets on a computer for two years and thinks they ought to be a coach. It's not Madden football. It has to deal with people. It's like all the analytics that everybody talks about this and that, and you should do this, you should do that. The computer told you that. When did the computer know what the weather was, whether it was raining, whether the wind was blowing? Whether the, you were playing good on defense, okay, they say, well, it's a two-point, it's a two-point game. Should you go for it on fourth down? Well, I don't know. Is the score 42 to 40 or six to three? You know, I, I don't. It makes a difference if you're playing great defense, then maybe not. Right. They're playing great defense. Don't. If they're playing lousy defense, yes. Computer doesn't tell you that. So it, it's kind of that way to me in coaching. Players want to be coached. They do. They do. All of them want to be coached. They want to be good. They want to be coached. They want to be told what to do and how to do it and correct them and talk to them and be honest with them. And I just don't feel in this generation sometimes of coaches that they have very good personal relationships with players. I love my players. I've always loved my players. Everybody asks me, who's your favorite player? I go, all of them. Yeah. All of them. There, anybody that played for me is my favorite player. So to me, that's what you learn over the course of 48 seasons is, you know, to just go coach them and, and be personal with them and care about them. You know, and I just, anymore it's how fast can I climb the ladder? I didn't climb up very fast, but I, I feel good about the way I did it. So, long story short. We like long stories, that's good. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you, else? Yep. I don't want to get all deep on you here, but now that you've been back, in the game for a full season. Have you enjoyed it? Oh, absolutely. Love it. Love Arthur, staff, players. I, I, I appreciate these players so much. They are given everything they got. They really are. And, and at, what else can you ask of somebody? I mean, in, a, in work, whether it be your profession, whatever you do, all you can ask is somebody give you what they got. And these guys give us what they got. And so do the coaches. I love this staff. This is an older staff now, you know, on defense, and, and I like it that way because I, I know how they've come up and how all that stuff. And we got some young assistant coaches who are learning from some older coaches, which is a great thing. I mean, Arthur's put together a great staff, and I have absolutely loved it.
Love it. Love the area. Love Atlanta. Love it. You guys good? Yeah. Okay. Thank you.